Welcome to my second project of two for the semester. RFID access control is this one created by myself, Jake Doyle. So the first thing we're going to do here is dive into the project plan. So you can see here we have a project description, basically what's going on throughout the process. Project plan, environmental concerns, system power, scan time, and the network protocol. We'll go to the parts list now. So here we have the part, the signal, amp limiter draw, the part number, a link to the company, some specs on the part, and a link to the part itself. So we have this broken up into the power supply, input devices, output devices, processing unit, communication, safety devices, enclosures, and miscellaneous. Now on to the I.O. map. For inputs, we have address, input itself, some comments, the type, what the device is, and the factory talk tag. As you can see here, we also have these broken up. So our first few inputs are our physical inputs, and then we have the RFID I.O. Some bits and some one-shots. Outputs, same story here. We have the address, some lights, and a conveyor. Some comments, types, the device, where it's located in the factory talk tag. This is broken up into physical outputs, and then the RFID outputs, and some bits. For timers and counters, use timers here in this project, mostly all on delays, one off delay. Now onto the bill of materials. So here we have a picture of the part, the part, the part number, quantity, the price, total price, and a link to the part. Scroll down here so you can catch a glimpse of all the parts being used throughout this project. And at the bottom here we have the total number, materials, same thing. Picture of the part, what it is, the number, quantity, color, and some specs. Here we have some wire, DIN rail, terminal blocks, jumpers, some screws. Now on to the process. So here, I'll explain kind of what goes on throughout the project. So for the first part, we'll start at the control panel. So this is where the process is started, stopped, and reset. This can happen at any time. The user will also select a mode between easy or hard using the selector switch and that will allow the game to begin. We'll move down to the first sequence or the read write head one. So this is where the game starts and stops. Once the correct tag is in front of the head, it'll be read correctly and the sequence will be correct, therefore being able to move on. Moving on to the second sequence or load station two. So after the first sequence is correct, the user will want to place their next chip onto the conveyor in line with the read-write head 2. So once that correct chip is detected by the read-write head, that sequence will be successful and then we'll be able to move on. Now we will move on to the third station. So the third station is very much like the second station, so after the second sequence is correct. So after a correct second sequence, the user will place the chips on the conveyor to be read by that head, the third read-write head. So they'll want to place the chips in line with the head for the best results, but this read-write head has a pretty good sensing distance. Next, we'll move on to the fourth and final sequence. We'll be back at read-write head 1. The player will take the remaining chips and place them in front of read-write head 1 to complete the game. We will now dive into the mechanical CAD drawing of the layout. So here's the stack light in the corner. Then you have the safety relay, terminal block 1, and the point AO. And then we have some wire raceway, and then a control relay, terminal block 2, power supply, some more terminal block, and a fuse holder. And then we have the physical push buttons over there on the left, some raceway, the RFID module, and the read-write head, and the conveyor. Next, we'll go into the electrical drawings. So here we have the incoming power. 120 volts is changing to 24 volts DC at the power supply, powering the safety relay. RFID module and the point AO. Next we have the safety relay drawing. And then we have our inputs. We have the auxiliary contract from our safety relay along with our physical buttons. Next we'll go on to our outputs, our lights here, stack light, and then lastly our conveyor. Here is a brief overview of the process and how the game works as a whole, kind of like the conceptual drawing. And now onto the owner's manual. So here we have the actions of the push buttons and the stack lights. 
And then we get into the step-by-step -step operation physically in the HMI operation. And then some actions or screens of the HMI. And then some notes for both physical and HMI actions. Now to the fun part or physical operation. So here the e-stop works. Red light will flash. You can reset. Select mode. Start. Green light will come on. And here we'll start our sequence. So I actually got pretty lucky here. So first tag was correct. Yellow light flash. Second tag was correct. And the third. And then the fourth. And the blue light came on. So the blue light will mean the game is completed. And then there will be a 10 second counter until the system is automatically reset. So I'll remove the chips here. Green light on. It's ready to go again. I'll change it to hard mode this time. And here is an example of a failed sequence. So I got the first one. Did not get the second one for a while. Third one, ran out of time. Now for the HMI, select easy mode, start. Then we'll go through the physical process. So sequence one was correct there. Sequence two. And you can see the timer counting down on the top right. Sequence three. And finally, the fourth sequence with your winner's message. So after 10 seconds, the system will reset just like the physical operation. So we can start, stop at any time. Select modes. You can see at the bottom there that it'll show either from the physical or the HMI operation. So I'll select hard mode here, show a failed sequence. First chip sequence, correct. Timer started. Second was correct. Third was correct, but the fourth was not. And your losing message. So lastly, we'll dive into the final summary. So here's what I wrote about the process and the product as a whole and kind of what I did throughout the whole process, where I started, where I finished, some obstacles, how I overcame those obstacles. And at the end here, we have the what went well and needs improvement list. So for what went well, I think I did a lot many things better than I did in my first project. The disassembly and assembly of this project went well. I enjoyed doing that. Mechanical CAD drawing, laying it all out to scale. My research was done pretty quickly. Wiring up the system and the electrical CAD drawings were also a breeze. The HMI was pretty fun, I would say. And then I guess my time management was a lot better than the first time. And my work outside of class was definitely a lot more productive. For my needs improvement, I guess the one main takeaway of this project was I wasn't really able to write onto the tags. I just tried and tried and tried for a few days there, but just couldn't successfully figure it out. So if I had more time, I would definitely sit down and see if I could figure that all out and implement it into this project and make it a little bit more complex. But other than that, the project went pretty smoothly. And that wraps up my second video. Thanks for watching.